I described to the junior congregation students the idea of a relay race, and they obviously have done them before, and how the idea that it's about teamwork and about passing the baton and seeing who is the better team, I guess, in terms of the, of the, of the relay race. And so I was in junior congregation. Now I have to come in here and do the sermon. So I pass the baton to Rabbi Stecker, who's going to go in there now. The other day I was in the hardware store and I needed a, like another screw. And of course, you have to bring the what you have because I don't know the names of it, the things. So I go up to the clerk and I say, good morning, how are you? And she says, fine, how are you? I say, fine. And then I show the, the screw. Or I call uh, the customer service and they need to run some update on my phone. And while they're doing that, they say, oh, I'm down here in Florida. What's the weather up like there in Great Neck? And I tell them, how are you doing today? And we kind of have small talk. What would happen if one of us, when we said, how are you today? were to say, you know what? I'm not having such the greatest day. I woke up on the bad side, my knee hurts, whatever it is. We would be kind of awestruck or like dumbstruck, really. What do we do? How do we respond to that? But have you ever wondered how the how are you, I'm fine, came part of sort of the recipe or the script of how we discourse with just kind of like even random strangers. It's just the way to how we begin our conversations. Was there once a time that people actually would say, how are you today? And actually give the real response if they were fine? Sure, go ahead and say, I'm fine and dandy. But if they weren't so fine, would they actually say that? And would you even know how to respond. Many of you might know what I'm getting at. Just a few weeks ago, I guess two weeks ago, Monday, uh, the Sesame Street workshop in the realm of Elmo tweeted, how are you? And he has, I guess, thousands, tens of thousands of followers. And they were shocked, Sesame Workshop that is, that they got many, many responses that were not so good. People said, Elmo, I'm not doing so hot. I'm struggling for money. I'm working too hard. I wish it was not Monday. It was Friday. The, the climate change is getting to me. All sorts of anxieties came out. And Elmo, Sesame Workshop, realized they had to respond. They had to respond and find a way to say, we're here for you and we hear you. Because really, in psychology, that's all you need to do. It is so tempting to want to fix people's problems. I have two twins. They're, they're 16 years old. And I'm really trying to convince, or not convince, I guide them to independence. And so when they come to me with a problem, my teacher gave me the wrong grade or penalized me when they weren't supposed to. I so want to fit good on the phone and fix it. But that's not what I'm supposed to do. What I'm supposed to do is just hear them, just listen to them and say, I hear your feelings. I'm here for you. Okay? That's all they need to do. It's their decision on how to respond. That's how we handle when someone says, How are you? I'm not so fine. And perhaps we need to get better with each other. Now, maybe not with the stranger in the hardware store. Maybe it was a time that people knew each other more. Maybe you knew the hardware store clerk because towns and communities were smaller. But we can find ways to make our community smaller here at Temple Israel or wherever you might be. And learn to say to somebody, how are you? And to just listen. The rabbis of the Mishnah 2,000 years ago even knew that. If you've been to Israel, you know, to Jerusalem, that we've expanded the Kotel, the Western Wall, to now the Southern Wall. And what's beautiful when you do that is you see curved, you know, sort of carved into the rock 
where there was the three sort of arched doorways, they could still see those. Obviously, it's bricked over now. And up those ways was 15 stairs, actually, by the way, outside. And then you would go in and climb up onto the Temple Mount because you started out on a plaza and you had to go up. And part of visiting the, um, the oh, he's brought Elmo with him, part of visiting the temple on the, on the, on the, on the um, holidays, which actually this Torah reading today mentions going to the temple three times a year, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, was a circumambulation, ambulation, going around. And the rabbis say, if everything is okay, you go counterclockwise. If things are not so okay in your life, you go clockwise. And the Mishnah points out, then people would know to ask, what's wrong? Why did you go in the opposite direction? Most people, according to the Mishnah, experienced a loss. They lost a parent, a family member. And so they would say, I'm in mourning. And the Mishnah says, the answer gives us, gives the listener the answer to say, may the one who dwells in this house, meaning God, because it's God's house, give you comfort as you mourn your loss. And if someone says that they're, they experienced actually a business loss, it actually says, may the one who lives in this house give you and prosper you. Notice, we're not giving actual aid. We're just giving comfort and saying, we listen, we hear you. We need to try to do that more here in synagogue, whatever communities we are on. And I cannot do a sermon anymore without mentioning Israel. And every time that we hear people experience things in Israel. Just this past Sunday, we had a soldier, Corey Feldman, who's American, who as a reservist went and did his reserve duty for several weeks in Gaza. And he just shared the experience. And then we had a chef, Sarah Locke, who came here on Wednesday, who helps give vegan food to soldiers who have chosen to go vegan. And all they both have said is we just need hugs. We just need presence, like your presence, not your presence, to be there for us. Just let us know that we're not alone. There's not as much, you know, having to send tons and tons of supplies. There's trips going daily. Ours are leaving March 24th, little plug there. And people ask me, can we bring anything? Can we bring anything? And all the Israelis are saying to me right now is, just bring yourself. Just bring your face. Just bring your listening ears. So yes, if you can go to Israel to do that, great. But if you can pick up a phone, pick up a FaceTime, send a letter even, to just let the Israelis know that we're with them, that's all that we need. So whether it's Elmo who asks you or yourselves, if someone says, how are you doing? Choose if you can be honest. And if you know that someone's going to share with you, say, how are you doing? Hear them and just say, shamati, I hear you. Shabbat shalom.